Devil, you messed up when you mess with us. I'm speaking to every unclean spirit under the sound of my voice. Tonight will be the last night that you torment them. We're going to execute judgment on you. Tonight will be the last night you are in our family. Tonight will be the last night you afflict our body. Ah, I wish somebody would get a revelation of what total freedom feels like. Come on. Stop when you mess with us! It's the warfare that unlocks the warrior inside of you. I thank God for the warfare because the warrior came out. When you hear the taunts of Goliath, a David is coming forth. When there's a famine in the land, a Joseph is coming forth. I thank God something was birthed when there was trials. Something was birthed when there was tribulations. Are there some warriors here tonight? We've been singing songs of deliverance tonight, can you tell? These were warfare songs tonight, can you tell? The Bible says if Christ be lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. Tonight we are under the banner of the cross of Jesus Christ. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess Jesus Christ as Savior. Come on, California, let's terrorize the terrorizers. Let's give depression depression. Let's give fear fear. It's time to reverse it back on the devil tonight. Somebody shout reverse. Somebody shout reverse. Somebody shout reverse. Everything that was done to us is getting ready to be done to the enemy. I'm not confused, but my worship is releasing confusion into the enemy's camp. you understand everything the devil did to you you can do back to him I don't think you understand that you can take Goliath's sword and cut his head off with his own sword devil tonight is your last night you messed up when you mess with us when you mess with us you messed up when you mess with us oh uh, he's just up there hyping us oh uh, this is some cheerleader stuff uh, no get out of here with your religious spirit Blow the trumpet on Zion. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Use the cymbal. Use the, come on. I'll break the back of a spirit of religion tonight. If I don't cry out in San Bernardino, the rocks will cry out in San Bernardino. If I don't declare the name of Jesus. Somebody say the blood. Somebody say the blood. The blood has not lost its power. Just one drop of that blood was enough. I said just one drop of that blood was enough. These churches know about confession. They don't know about the blood. It's, oh, come on, somebody. Every religion prays. Islam prays. Hinduism prays. But when we pray, we pray covered by the blood. Words without the blood have no power. But the blood with no words speaks of a greater power. I'm here to testify of the blood. When that voice of accusation reminds you of your past, you say, yes, everything you said was true, but you left the most important part out. It's covered by the blood. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did it. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> 
and I did that, and I did that. Everything you said was true, but you left out the only part that mattered. It's covered by the blood. See, the devil is always calling you from your past. He's always calling you from your past into your present, reminding you of what you did. But Jesus is always calling you from your future, reminding you of where you're headed, reminding you, oh, come on, somebody. I'm talking about the blood tonight. He's in the future saying, I see you tomorrow, and you're better than you are today. You're freer than you are today. You're wiser than you are today. I said, you're wiser. Devil, it worked on me back then, but it don't work on me anymore. Oh, you fooled me back then but you ain't fooling me no more I'm not going back to my vomit I'm covered by the blood I'm not going back to that vomit I'm not going back to that pit of hell oh I've been covered by the blood somebody shout the blood the blood the devil hates preaching about the blood he hates the mention of the blood he's scared of the blood leviticus says that the life of the creature is in the blood you understand what i'm saying why do you think that there would be a there would be a call that was made to kill all of the firstborn why would the devil be afraid of the baby he was afraid of the baby jesus because the blood of the baby jesus was the blood of god he hates the blood the life of the animals in the blood in the book of Leviticus the sacrifice called for the sprinkling of the blood seven different ways some of y'all think Jesus just bled one time he bled seven times and every single time there was a sprinkling of that blood it was another form of freedom that was available to you and so tonight we're gonna unlock because pastor when I was praying for tonight I kept seeing the number seven the number seven the number seven and then when you started singing your song you started to declare it is finished it is finished it is finished way world outreach this is not a 20 20th anniversary this is a declaration of seven complete whole it's time God started something he's finishing it he's wrapping it up it's time for launch I see the number seven. Oh, come on somebody somebody say the blood I kept the blood was sprinkled seven different ways when did, when did God rest in Genesis? On, on what day? Be why? Because it was finished. How many times was Aaron consecrated? How many times was Aaron consecrated for the priesthood? Seven times. Some of you are like, why do I keep going through deliverance? Because you're on the fifth time. You're on the sixth time, but tonight's the seventh time. Oh, somebody shout unto God if you believe you're coming to the end of a process. Come on, take your seats. Take your seats. Wow. I done lost my voice today. I sound like T.D. Jakes up here. How many ways was the blood shed? Number one, Luke 22. Y'all want to get free tonight? And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat came out like great drops of blood falling to the ground how many of you know Gethsemane it was the place where sweat turned to blood place your hand on your mind real quick I want you to say anxiety go in Jesus name fear loose my mind in Jesus name I plead the blood over my mind in Jesus name come on somebody say amen 
crown of thorns comes next, but Gethsemane came first. That means that the internal pressure on Jesus' mind was so great that his sweat turned to blood. Wave at me if you struggle with anxiety. Look around. What does this mean? It means you can be free from the pressures in your mind. Amen? Yeah. Number two, the crown of thorns. Matthew 27, 29, bring it up. Look what it says. They put a crown of thorns on his head. What happened when they put the crown of thorns is he bled 365, 360 degrees. Not just some of your mind. How much of your mind was freed by the blood? All. Somebody say all. all. It wasn't a tiara for a princess. It was a crown of thorns for a king. A tiara goes on the front, but a crown of thorns goes around. It was as if God was saying, your whole mind could be free. How many of you are thankful that the blood secured freedom for your entire mind? Number three, Jesus bled at the high priest's house. Y'all didn't even know about this, did you? Mark chapter 14, verse 65. He's at the high priest's house. Hey, for those of you who are new to church, can I just tell you, you're going to get hurt in church. You, you want to know why? Because you're here and you're not perfect and I'm not perfect and we're gonna hurt each other on purpose and on accident. But there's a provision that was made for church hurt when Jesus' blood was spilled at the high priest's house. Oh, y'all aren't catching this. So what that means, look at it. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him saying, prophesy, and the guards received him with blows. So he's at the high priest's house. And while he's at the high priest's house, they spit on him. They, they mock him, prophesy. You know what that's a symbol of? Being in church when people mock you for your gift. Instead of embracing you for your gift, being in church and they spit on you with the venom of gossip instead of encouraging you. But at the high priest's house, when they struck Jesus' face, blood came out of it so that there was a provision for you to get healed by church hurt. Oh, the blood was spilled seven different ways. Have you experienced seven forms of freedom? Some of you have only experienced one, some of you three, but tonight you're about to experience all seven. Are you all flowing with me? Number four, I'm gonna need uh, somebody to help me with this. It's an illustration. His beard was plucked out. Any bearded men wanna jump up here? But this is what it says. Isaiah 50 verse six, I gave my back to those who strike and I gave my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace. So the way that he jumped up on the stage and gave me his face, See, there's gonna be some times where you wanna shrink back. There's gonna be some times where you say, God, I don't know if I can do this. God, I don't know if I can serve you. God, I don't know, I just wanna hide. I, I don't wanna even be involved in all this. It's too much pressure. But it says Jesus gave his face so they can pluck the beard. What does that mean? No matter how much hurt you encounter, to be like Christ is to continue to give your face to those who pull out your beard. What does that mean? It means that you can be a Christian for a lifetime because no matter how many times they pluck it back, it grows back every time. And the blood of Christ is sufficient even in the area of rejection. Thank you, man of God, thank you. So why do I say this? I think that there's a lot of baby Christians today. Wusses, weak easily offended, obsessed with the comments section. You gossip more than you prophesy and, it tell, and I can tell. You spend more time scrolling than you do eating the scroll. 
You spend more time, come on, I'm just trying to help you. You're living on a diet of 37 second preachings and sermons, but you're not going into the secret place and hearing from the Father. It's time to grow up. We've got to be willing to give our face, to pull out our beard, give our back to be strong. We've got to share in the suffering of the Lamb. Share in the suffering of the Lamb. So when his blood was spilled, it makes you unoffendable. Let me show you a scripture. Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. But far be it for me to boast except in the cross. Somebody say the cross. By which the world has been crucified to me and I the world. You can't hurt my feelings if I'm dead. You can't offend me if I don't exist. You can only offend a living person. But I've died with Christ. No, I don't live, but it's Christ that lives in me. I don't care what you think about me because I'm a dead man walking. Who wants to die with me? So the blood was spilled seven different ways. Completion. Let's die together. Who cares what they think? When you were sinning, they still didn't like you. They just liked watching you fall because it made them feel better about themselves. They were never your friend because your friend will take you to your destiny and they took you to a party to take you to hell. So it's time to die. It's time to mature. It's time to go into the meat of the word and get off the milk. It's time to share in the suffering of Christ. I don't know what's in this, but I'm going to drink it. <laughs> That's all right. Number five. We just had a debate last night in this country. I don't care what you think about it. Some of you have never prayed for a president, but you've complained about one. Stop putting your leaders on a pedestal so they can fall down and put them on a prayer list so we can lift them up. <laughs> you ain't gonna like me. You ain't gonna like me. <laughs> Jesus was scourged by Pilate. John chapter 19, verse one. So now the political leader scourges him why because jesus said there's freedom even in the arena of government there's favor in the area of government the new york city mayor invited me to his house two times that's a big mistake i was anointing his walls i was praying for his toilet i said ain't no ghost put the holy ghost up in here no spirit but the holy spirit he told me, he told my team, he found me on TikTok. The New York City mayor, why do you have a TikTok? <laughs> then he said, I want to come to V1 Church because I want to spend 10 minutes with Mike Signorelli. Why would the mayor of the biggest city of the United States want to spend 10 minutes with me? Because the blood of Jesus was spilled when he was scourged by Pilate so that I could have favor with Eric Adams. Y'all feel what I'm saying? Oh, we're going all the way there tonight. Number six, says. <laughs> Nails in his hands and feet. Psalm chapter 22, verse 16. For dogs encompass me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They've pierced my hands and feet. Look at your hands. Look at your hands. Do you see your father's hands? Do you see your mother's hands? Are you triggered looking at your hands? Reminded of those who've gone before you? 
Do you think about what sin you've committed with your hands? Look at your feet. Do you remember how fast you ran to sin? You couldn't wait to get there to do that thing. But because the blood came out of his feet, he said, I'm going to give you shoes to speed the gospel. You're going to run into your appointment. You're going to run into your assignment. You're going to run into my arms. So the blood that was spilled out of his hands said that your hands destroyed, but now they'll build. Men, your hands punched, but now they'll lift up. Freedom in your hands. I sense in this room there's many creatives. How many of you are creative? Yeah. I feel authors. I feel writers. I feel videographers and cinematographers. I, I feel art in the room. This is fertile ground. You're going to write about your pain. You're going to paint about your pain. You're going to draw about your pain. I feel it. It's going to come out. The blood that came out of his hands releases art from your hands. This house, the songs of this house will be sung by the nations. It's already happening. It's going to happen more. Do you believe it? Number seven. A spear in his side. John chapter 19, verse 34. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. And at once there came out blood and water. Somebody say, and water. And water. Why? When they pierced him, they went through his rib cage into his heart. And see, the, the Jews have mikvahs for ritualistic cleansing. They go down into the water and they come up. It's like a form of baptism. It was almost as if when the blood and water came out of Jesus' heart, it said the blood is to wash you clean forever, but the water is to renew you daily. So you can, you can be in this world, but not of this world. You can stay pure in the midst of filth because the blood and the water, the water washes you and the blood washed you. There's something about this revelation. You can be pure. Pornography is not your final destination. Addiction to drugs and alcohol is not your final destination. There can be freedom forever. There's some people you haven't forgiven yet. Tonight you're going to forgive them. You don't forgive because they deserve it. You forgive because you didn't deserve to be forgiven. You don't forgive because they deserve it. You forgive because Jesus said you deserve to be free. So blood and water came out of his side. When you look at the Levitical order, the lamb that was slain, seven different ways the blood would be sprinkled. And Jesus fulfilled the Levitical template. So let me do this again from one to seven. Are you ready? Number one, Gethsemane. It was the internal pressure that caused his sweat to turn to blood. So when there's no external pressure, you can still experience freedom in your mind from the things that aren't there. Anxiety is a liar. It tells you something's going to happen that never happens. But then what happens is you receive a counterfeit comfort. Counterfeit comfort. Jesus said the Holy Spirit is a comforter. So then the devil says, but you need more. The devil's always trying to add. <laughs> you need a vape. Because when you vape, it'll help you get through the anxiety. The devil is a liar. Counterfeit comfort. You can't have two masters. You'll love the one, you'll hate the other. You can't have no other gods beside him. There's only one. 
And if a vape is your comfort, the Holy Spirit is not your comforter. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. But the problem is you have a generational curse of addiction and everyone before you suffered with worry and anxiety and they found something other than the Holy Spirit and you'll never know the fullness of his comfort until you receive the fullness of deliverance. You've got to completely let it go to receive the fullness of what he has for you. Oh, I feel this strong tonight because you would think that all these beautiful people that you don't have any drugs here. No, you wouldn't bring drugs in a church, but they're in this room right now. You would think, no, nobody who got saved is struggling with cigarettes and vapes, but I know it's in the room. And tonight's the night. Tonight's the night. The crown of thorns. Sometimes life pushes down into your mind and you can't deal with the pressure. You hear the news, the situation. I have a dear friend. She's a powerful prophet. Just got a medical diagnosis moments before I got on stage. She said, Mike, pray for me. The crown of thorns is being pushed but Jesus' blood came out so we could be free in our thoughts, inside and outside. When the pressure is non-existent, we can have freedom. But when the pressure's real, we can also have freedom because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. The high priest house. You know what's funny? Some of you don't belong to a church. You're here because Vlad came here. You're here because I came here. But Jesus spilled his blood in the high priest's house. And then Jesus became the high priest that prays for you. And he said, upon this rock, Peter, I will build. Come on. And not even the gates of hell will prevail against it. Stop lying and saying we're all the church. Those who are under authority are in authority. But if you are not under authority, you cannot be in authority. You must be accountable. And you don't, you don't say, well, I don't have a church because you're smarter and more spiritual than us. It's because you're wounded and you need to forgive people and you need deliverance. And then you need to come to a church and you need to get grafted in. Oh, I'm stepping on toes tonight. Happy 20th. But people have given way to the seduction of demons that tell them that they can sit at home and forsake the gathering of the brethren. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus spilled his blood at the high priest house so that we could come together and worship extravagantly like we did tonight. I thank God for the church. Church isn't a building. Yes, but we need a building. <laughs> I can be extra mean because I fly out tomorrow. <laughs> but y'all need to hear this because everywhere Jesus spilled his blood was another revelation of freedom for you and I and we have to step fully in but Pastor Mike I was hurt by a pastor yes the first Adam fell so Jesus had to come as a man to free us from the sin of a man so if you were hurt by a pastor, news flash, he's gonna use another pastor to help heal you. <laughs> oh, I'm speaking to somebody. You're saying no, there has to be another way. Don't let your pain make the decisions. Stop making decisions out of pain, amen. I'm almost done and then we're gonna pray and I'm hoarse 
But demons don't respond to loudness, they respond to authority. <laughs> and some people are loud, but no authority. And I'll whisper a demon out of you tonight. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Y'all don't even know. I'm built different. I'm built different. Tonight's the night. Scourged by Pilate, nails in his hands and feet, and a spear in his side. So let's go deeper. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it for you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it's the blood that makes atonement. Okay. Here's what you need to understand. Pagans, witches, and warlocks understand the power of blood. At all of our V1 campuses, we find blood on the Sunday mornings when we walk in. And Indiana campus, they take tampons saturated in blood and they make pentagrams. They cut the heads of chickens off and put those heads in our properties because they understand the power of blood. How many of you know Satan is an emulator? Satan's an emulator, but blood represents covenant. It's deeper than commitment. Jesus didn't commit to you. He covenanted to you. See, when, when you commit, you can break up, but a covenant is forever. So when that blood was spilled, see the demonic counterfeit is oaths and contracts. So what has to happen is a greater blood. If the life of the animal carries the blood, then a greater blood has to be spilled to break that oath and contract. You, now you're getting a revelation. So when they put the menstruation blood on our church properties, the devil's mocking us. But I say, like an old school Pentecostal, but I plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the greater blood that breaks the curse, breaks every contract, breaks every oath. We are owned by him. The blood declares a different story. Somebody shout the blood. <laughs> there ain't no Santeria stronger than the blood of Jesus. There, for all of my Jamaicans, there's no Come on, there's no obia stronger than the blood. Oh, I'm well versed in witchcraft because I've been tormenting spirits all over the earth for a long time. And I'm here to tell you, the blood of Jesus always wins. Undefeated. The blood of Jesus always wins. Somebody shout the blood. Isaiah 53, 7, or 12. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with many and divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. Thank you, Jesus. Take a praise break. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you, Father, for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Come on, come to the cross with me. Thank you for the blood, Jesus. If you want to stay on your feet, stay on your feet. Now, when the 
animal was killed in the Levitical order. They drained the blood in a basin. It was like a tub, but the blood does nothing in the basin. You gotta go through the process. Follow me. So we always talk about the sacrifice, but it's not just the sacrifice, it's the splattering. If the blood is not applied, it has to be applied to have effect. Where did I learn this? Passover. And by the way, when the spirit of death was passing by, it was the blood applied, not the blood in the basin. If it didn't get to the doorpost, the firstborn died. The blood had to be applied. Do y'all hear me? And this is a side note theologically, but the commandment to apply the blood over the family was not given to the wife. It was not given to the children. It was given to the man. How many men are willing to apply the blood over the doorposts of their family and say, devil, we're covered by the blood. I love a praying woman, but there's some jobs for the men to do. Are there some men who are going to apply the blood? So, okay. I'm going to keep going deeper. Are you with me? A few more moments. Okay, so here's what it says. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame, they conquered by what? Come on, roll that scripture. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they loved not their lives even unto death. Watch. When you quote the scripture, you always say, they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And we stop there. But the rest of the verse is what makes the first part of the verse come true. They love not their life unto death. They said, I'm willing to die. Kill me for this thing. I'm all in. And when they went all in, they gave their testimony and the blood was splattered and they overcame. They love not their life unto death. So what does that mean? You got to die for this thing. You got to go 100% all in. They love, there's not a lot of Christians like that. You haven't met a lot of Christians like that. They're punks when the Holy Spirit tells them to evangelize. Even though they've been saved and delivered and set free, they're too afraid to do it. News flash, I never stop feeling the fear, but I do it anyways because Jesus did it anyways for me. When the blood came from his brow, what he was saying was, I don't care, I don't want to do this. Let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, somebody shout, Nevertheless, they love not their life unto death. Watch, one last thing. The blood's in the basin. When you go back to the Passover story, he said, take a weed, a weed that grows everywhere, and take it like a branch and break it off and dip it in the basin and apply it over the doorpost. What was that a symbol of? That little branch is your testimony. God, what, what could you get out of my life? I'm just like a weed that grew in San Bernardino. I'm just like a weed that grew in California. But God says the value is not in the branch, it's in the blood. When you put the blood on the branch, it's in, oh, come on, I'm about to. I was just a weed. 
But when I got dipped into the basin and covered in the blood, I splatter that blood everywhere I go. And the value is not in the branch, it's in the blood. So don't be impressed by Vlad Softchuck. He's a branch covered in blood. Don't be impressed by Mike Signorelli. I'm just a branch covered in blood. It's always been about the blood. So here's what I want to ask you. For my friends that have not received all seven splatterings of the blood and you're still holding on to counterfeit comforts, if you're in this room right now and you have drugs, paraphernalia, weed, cigarette, e-cigarettes, bring it to me now. Come up and bring it to me. There's more. There's more. I want to be persistent. Yeah, come, come. Yeah, bring it to me. understand I mean I was just handed some explicit drugs I want to be careful for myself what I touch yeah bring me a box now no, I got it I got it I want to do something though because I got I got a lot of stuff up here but there's some of you who still didn't come see the the thing about the blood is the blood demands that you come boldly, that you come out of darkness and you walk up to the cross. So I'm gonna ask again, if you need to get free, bring it up right now. Come on, keep on coming. Revelation. This is for the worship team. Let me give me give me one of the big ones. <laughs> so I was asking God, give me a revelation on why I keep seeing these e-cigarettes and vapes everywhere. Wow. Look. given us the head of our enemy. <laughs> so, I've 
to get in this revelation because these things are flavored I've never done one I know it sounds like it but I've never done one but these things have a fragrance and the Lord told me he said this generation is destined for incense day and night night and day you know that song day and night night and day let incense arise but the devil came to give false incense this is demonic incense and they do it day and come on come come they're still getting free
because you're learning Bryce you went first you brought your alcohol and then I made a prophecy and then look who came next somebody has to go first I told you you're a movement maker you're a movement maker and I'm so proud of you give me your hand everybody stretch your hands towards her I want you to declare that this spirit of alcoholism is broken for once and for all never to return in the name of Jesus I speak to this foul unclean spirit that's tried to rob her of her health and her future I cancel your assignment by the blood of Jesus right now and I command you to loose her and let her go in Jesus mighty name freedom freedom right now Jesus name loose her now continue to pray with her some of you are shocked and you thought that I was lying when I said this church tonight was filled with drugs and alcohol but you're seeing it because at the foot of the cross everything in darkness comes out this is a crack pipe this is a crack pipe freedom freedom to you okay come here you're shaking God has been waiting for this moment this is bigger than this you have a high calling on your life You have a high calling on your life and the Lord says I'm gonna use you to liberate many women and you're gonna go into the dark places and you're gonna pull them out you're gonna go into the highways and the byways and pull them out and your story will be told in the earth and many will be free but tonight is a turning point let me pray for you right now in the name of Jesus I release the power of God there it is fill her now fill her now to do what you've called her to do we break the power of addiction now every generational curse on her mother and father's side be broken by the blood right now freedom yeah come on there it is it's a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. Yeah, speak it out, girl. You're getting the gift of tongues right now. Speak it out, girl. You're getting the gift of tongues right now. Yeah, 
speak it out. Fire upon you right now. You can't make this up. This pack of cigarettes says 24 7. Did I not say that is 24 7 incense? The devil thinks he's mocking us. But, devil, who's laughing now? We are.
don't hold back. I said, don't hold back. Some of you are thinking about saying their name and you're like, I can't do it. Yes, you can. The Holy Spirit will empower you to do it right now. Some of you have been holding on forgiveness for years. Rheumatoid arthritis, lower back pain can be rooted in unforgiveness. Physical conditions can be connected to unforgiveness in the spiritual realm. And the Bible says, forgive as I've forgiven you. Deliverance is already starting. I'm telling you, there's a wave of deliverance that's about to go through this place. On the count of three, I want you to declare their names and say, I forgive them. And we're gonna break the power of unforgiveness. One, two, three. Begin to say it now. I forgive. I forgive. Say their name. I forgive my mother. I forgive my father. I forgive my cousin. I forgive my stepdad. Begin to call it out. with me right now get ready because I'm telling you a wave of deliverance is gonna break out it's already starting demons hate forgiveness I want you to say this I break and release myself from every curse of unforgiveness I'm covered by the blood the curse of bitterness is broken the curse of unforgiveness is broken every demon connected to that curse leave me now out of me now go go now in the name of jesus <laughs> here it is up and out now go to the pit of hell every single one of you out now from the bloodline go now to the abyss every single one of you foul spirits yeah there it is There's two kinds of screams tonight. The screams of demons leaving and the screams of God's people celebrating. We are free from unforgiveness tonight. Yeah, come on, do you hear it? Every spirit of witchcraft, I break your power now under the sound of my voice and command you to loose them and come out in Jesus' name. Every spirit of witchcraft, Je come on, Jezebel, Ahab, up and out to the abyss now. Mind control, go to the abyss now. In Jesus' name, out, out, Pharmakia, Pharmakia, your power's broken, out, go.
few more moments. False impartation from witches and warlocks who called themselves apostles and prophets. False impartation. I break it now in the name of Jesus. Come on, there it is. There it is. Doctrines of demons, every stronghold down now. False fathers in the faith, false impartations. I break your power. Every spirit of Ahab and Jezebel that was connected to false impartation from witches and warlocks calling themselves apostles and prophets, go out to the abyss now. demons are coming out all over this place tonight the number seven it is finished the number seven it is finished we're not leaving this place bound we're leaving this place free the holy spirit just spoke to me and said chronic illness there's a demon of chronic illness lift your hands if you need freedom from chronic illness every spirit of infirmity your powers broken infirmity and sickness come out of their body infirmity come out of their back come out of their head come out of their blood cells Let's honor the presence of Jehovah. 
Let's honor the presence of Jesus. Come on, he's walking. He's walking through the aisles, through the Holy Spirit. Some of you are like, I can't come up front. Yes, but the Holy Spirit is coming to you in a tangible way. Some of you are going to start getting hit with the power of God in your seat right now. Let's reverence his presence. He's here. He's here. He's here. to do something what we're gonna do right now is gonna be radical do you know the story when the house was full and the friends broke open the roof and lowered their friend in if you know somebody who's sick put them on FaceTime right now bring them into this room and let me pray for them the last time I did this two people were miraculously healed of cancer if you know somebody who needs a healing, put them on FaceTime now. Get your phone. Let's bring them into the room and we're going to pray for them because the Lord just quickened me and said, I want to do more than what's in this room. The last time I did this was in Anaheim. We got miracle stories of tumors and cysts dissolving medically verifiable miracles. So hit up your friend, whoever they are, and tell them we want to pray for you. I'm almost done here tonight, but I felt like we needed to lower our friends into the room to encounter Jesus right now. Are you FaceTiming them? Come up, come up, come up. Yeah. church I'm not gonna put the mic on it but tell me what you need prayer for yeah who else you you what she need Okay, look. Yeah, look at all these people. Okay, let me do this. 
If you are on a phone, your friend, your family member believes that Jesus is going to heal you and you're here on the phone right now because of the power of agreement, we're joining our faith together to believe for a miracle for your healing right now. You will live and not die. You will live and not die. I rebuke the spirit of death. Church, look at all these phones. God wants to heal these people. Do we believe he can do it? your help let's pray for them now I command every cancer cell to die under the sound of my voice every tumor and cyst dissolve now in the name of Jesus yeah come on church help me pray supernatural healing right now Jesus mighty name Yes, yes, lungs be healed. Neurological conditions be healed. In the mind be healed. Huh? Lymphoma be healed. In the name of Jesus be healed. Come on, church, keep praying. Miracles are happening. We're breaking the walls down. Healing is in this place. Healing, healing. is the healer oh yes I have a gift of healing but we honor the gift giver not the gift he's the healer so let's pray because there's more people there's a desperation for healing but let's just pray one last time for everybody in the room and everybody in the phone but for those of you who are doubting for those of you who are doubting from tonight I will receive many many testimonies in the weeks and the months to come these people will go to the doctor and the doctors will confirm what I already know by faith guys the reason why I'm so hoarse is I just got back from Europe I was doing this every day I'm still getting the reports of healing he is faithful to heal so father every last remaining condition under the blood now there is nothing impossible what is impossible for me says the Lord no nothing nothing is impossible 
nothing is impossible. I feel the release of faith. I feel an impartation of faith. Somebody's receiving the gift of faith right now. Faith, faith is being released. I feel it, faith. The Bible says there's a gift of faith as well. And I feel faith being released to some of you. Wow, wow. Wow, so much freedom tonight. So much freedom. I'm stepping over crack pipes and marijuana and pills. The devil is under our feet. He's under our feet. So I want to pray this prayer in conclusion. But really, we're not ending. We're transitioning. <laughs> what do I mean by that? We're about to leave this place whenever we leave it. But we're going to go back into the world and run rush shot all over the devil. Oh, I'm, I'm more excited for what's about to happen when y'all get released from this place. Because we're games are over and it's time to conquer and take territory and step in to the fullness of what God has for us. Y'all feel that? So, there's two things that happen while I was ministering tonight. When you were looking at me, I saw two things in your eyes. One, many of you are saying to me in the spirit, I need to get free. And freedom has happened. Freedom from demons, freedom from addiction, freedom from all kinds of stuff. But the other thing I saw in your eyes was you were saying, I want to be activated. Put me in the game. Get me off the shelf. Get me off the bench. I want to be a demon slayer. I want to do what God asked me to do. It was never supposed to be a one-man show. The only man is Jesus. We're not about building audiences. We're about equipping armies. So how many of you want to get activated? How many of you want to receive the gifts of the Spirit? Prophets arise. Come on, you're about to leave this place filled. I want to do something real quick. Wave at me if you don't have the gift of tongues. Wave at me if you don't have the gift of tongues. Wow, that's too many of you. Okay, listen to this story. At the V1 Church, one of our locations, there was a guy singing next to me. And I thought he was singing in Spanish because he's Hispanic. So I said, keep going, mijo. Keep going, mijo, that's beautiful. And all of a sudden, when it was over, he came to me, he said, Pastor Mike, thank you for letting me sing in tongues. I said, I thought you were singing in Spanish. He said, no, it was tongues. Then he got a text from his sister that said, when did you learn Portuguese? He said, I don't know Portuguese. She said, I was watching the V1 live stream and you were singing in Portuguese. And he goes, what was I singing? Because I thought I was just singing in tongues. And she said, you were saying the phrase, I give all my devotion to you. Tongues is real. How many of you believe in the gift of prophecy, the gift of healing, the gift of wisdom, knowledge? Lift your hands towards heaven. Let me pray for you to receive the gift that God has for you. And then we're going to worship. Speak it freely if you receive it right now into the sound of my voice. Holy Spirit, baptize them now. Holy Spirit, give them gifts right now. Gifts of healing, gifts of wisdom and knowledge, gifts of discerning of spirits. Now, in the name of Jesus, receive it. Come on, church, let's just lavish him with our worship now. Come
Come on, if you receive the gift of tongues, just begin to speak it out. Come on, let's worship. Come on.